So this very gadget is just rec uh, recording or this also uh, am amplifying? No, uh, it's no, just it's recording. Just recording yeah. Okay. Uh, we have the, uh, the old school uh, pointer. Okay. Uh, we also there have a more laser. modern pointer. If it's up to you. Okay. Whichever you like. You can use both too. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I already want to emphasize this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so we're very happy to have uh, Luis Alvarez Russo uh, give us a discussion of the theory of resonance production and decay. Yeah, I can always use the pointer with the slides and the and the stick with the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, in the in the in the previous talk, Ari said that resonances was some were somebody else's work, <laughs> and uh, well. <laughs> Actually, many people have made their livings out of resonances, practically from the very early days of, of particle physics, and definitely from the moment where pion beams, decent pion beams, became, became available, and pion nucleon <coughs> ela elastic scattering and also other inelastic channels started to be uh, investigated. So people first discovered resonances, classified them, uh, extracted um, spin and, and parity, right Bigner parameters, masses, width, branching ratios. And at some point also people realized that it was just cleaner or at least better defined from the mathematical point of view to, to, um, class to define the resonant properties in terms of pole positions in the, in the complex plane and the residues of those, of those poles. Still, ma many, many of us keep thinking about resonances as, as, as bright beginners. But um, I think there is a consensus that it is better to um, define them in terms of, of, of poles and residues in the, in the complex plane. Um, <coughs> so it's been like 15 years or maybe more that uh, decent uh, photo, pro photo production, pion photo production, an electron, uh, uh, an electron uh, production of, of, of pion has have become, um, so we have decent data on that, and that opened the door to electromagnetic properties that are usually parameterized in terms of, of, uh, of helicity amplitudes. I don't know if there is a deep reason for, for that, or it's simply a historical reason, but, but this is what um, is usually um, obtained in the analysis. So we have three helicity amplitudes. Um, two of them appear, the, appear for, for transverse photons. One is for longitudinal, so you, they, they would only be present for in, in the case of virtual photons, that is in electron scattering. So we see that those, those um, helicity amplitudes are basically matrix elements of the electromagnetic current contracted with the uh, photon polarization. In, in the spherical basis. So we have the <coughs> plus component or the zero component here. And, tho and, and, and those operators are taken between states, nucleon and resonance states with uh, well-defined uh, helicity. And okay, so in the case of spin one half resonances, this, the A3 half is, is not present, just A1 half and then, uh, so sorry, A1 half and S1 half in the, in the longitudinal sector. And, uh, so the goals of this kind of studies have been, well, first of all, to really uh, complete, so obtain a, a, a complete knowledge about the nucleon excitation spectrum. Also, there have been a strong motivation to compare to quark models and look for, for missing resonances. So this is something that has worried the certain community a lot, that is the fact that quark model predicts many, predict many more states than what's observed in, in, in experiment. One of, one of the possibilities that has been discussed is that many of those states are decoupled from pi n, where resonances are originally identified. So in that case, they should show up in other, in, in, in other experiments like photon or, or electron scattering uh, experiments. More recently, uh, it has been become possible to compare experimental results with, with lattice QCD. So now, now there are not only spectra, uh, but also <coughs> also um, <coughs> electromagnetic couplings and, and form factor from, from, from the lattice. Now, in order to um, extract resonance properties, 
one needs a partial wave analysis. And it is easy to see that you, you cannot identify and, and, and study resonances just by looking at bumps in the, in the cross section. This might work for the delta. But once you go higher in, in, in energy, the resonances start to overlap. So you have to look, in, look, look at the data in more detail. You need very precise, high quality uh, data sets and theoretical models. Even, even if the um, quantities that people try to extract in this partial wave analysis are, or at least the goal is that they are as model independent as possible, you still need some, some theoretical models with some approximation and assumptions. In general, so be, be <coughs> without entering into, into, into many details, most of them are relativistic. Few of them imp implement cross symmetry. This is, this is not very easy to, to have. In the case of, of electromagnetic reaction, the, uh, the idea is to have gauge invariant amplitudes. And then typically, there are two ingredients. So there's a non resonant part, which could be more or less phenomenological or more or less fundamental or microscopic, depending on the, on the model. And then there is a resonant part, which is mostly parameterized in, uh, like bright, uh, by bright bigners. Now, a very important ingredient of this kind of, of, of models is unitarity. And unitarity is not easy to, to, to implement exactly. So the, the idea is to solve Bethesda-Peter equations in, in coupled channels, and, and, and that would be it. In practice, uh, there are many approximations. For instance, it's very common that background and resonances are unitarized separately. For instance, using K-matrix, the K-matrix approximation. Actually, if you think of the um, unitarization as um, the resummations of loops of, of, of the two particles in the final state, like the, a loop of, of pion and nucleon, which is then resummed, the K-matrix approximation would correspond to taking only the imaginary part of those loops. And then there are also dynamical models where not only the imaginary part of that loop is kept, but also some real part. This, of course, introduces extra, extra parameters because you have infinities to, um, that need to be regularized. So again, <coughs> I'm not trying to be exhaustive here, just showing a few examples of, of partial wave analysis in the, that have been in the, in the market. First two of them. Um, deal with, with pion nucleon elastic scattering along, to the best of my knowledge. And there, there was the set, which is probably the, the best known and the most popular um, study. They started also with pion nucleon elastic scattering and then went to many other channels, including photons, electrons, and, and um, different fi uh, final states like uh, in nucleon eta or uh, keon or, or lambda sigma. So they have, they have analyzed many, many channels. Then there is MADE, which was already mentioned in the previous, in the, per, in the discussion earlier today, that is uh, focused on the, on the extraction of, of uh, transition form factors. I'm going to talk about it in more detail. Then there is, um, there is a, a similar model in Giessen where, um, OK, any question you have, you ask, to, you ask Ulrich. He knows it all. And um, there, what, what, what I remember is that um, the, um, the K-matrix approximation is also used. And the, and the non-resonant background is, is built from, from, um, with effective Lagrangians. So then there is EBAC. Which is, which is a dynamical model, so they, they don't use the, um, the K-matrix approximation, but include also real parts. Again, we have an expert in the audience, which is Satoshi. Satoshi, are you, are you around? Yeah. OK, any question you have about EVAC, uh, ask him. And one of the most recent one is the Bodgatchina model, which again uh, uses K-matrix approximation for unitarization. And so in, the, in this case, the, the unitarization is not dot separately, but including both background and, and resonances. And they look specifically for, for pole. So they, they um, extrapolate, or extrapolate is not the right word. This is they, they, they go to the complex plane and, and look for, for poles and, and residues. And this is the, um, how they extract the, the resonant properties. So. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes 
exp taking, uh, explaining how MADE works. So it's, I'm going to take MADE as an example. So MADE is, uh, the, the goal of, of MADE is, uh, as I said before, is to extract, is, is to look at, at, at uh, photon and, and electroproduction data and extract electromagnetic properties of, of resonances, both at Q squared equals zero and as a function of Q squared. Uh, it has two, comp so the, the, the amplitude in, in this model has two ingredients. It's a, there is a background and a resonant component. And for each partial wave, so this is, the partial wave expansion is performed. And then, um, so the background is, uh, has, has a, um, some phenomenological models, some born terms, and then it's unitarized using the K-matrix approximation. And this brings in the, um, the pionucleon amplitude which is then obtained from SET, the, the, the George Washington University analysis. Um, so this, this is how the background is, 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 is implemented here. And then on top of that, there is the, the resonant background, the resonant contribution. Here you can identify standard bright Bigner structure. This is the production <coughs> vertex. This is the decay vertex. And then here there is a, there is a, a phase so this phase in the main model is, is adjusted to um, basically to recover the, um, the right phase, so the, the, the phase that, the, that the, the full process should have according to the Watson theorem. So the Watson theorem tells that in this case, the, 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 the phase of the amplitude is the dictated by the strong part, which is the pion, the pion nucleon uh, amplitude. Finally, this, this term here, which is the most important for, for us, those are the, the multiple amplitudes. And this is what, what the, the, the goal of the, of the, of the uh, analysis is to extract those multiple amplitudes and then helicity amplitudes, those I introduced earlier, appear as, as linear combinations of the, of the multiple amplitudes. So this, this, this this is done in this in this kind of studies. Here you see some examples for the for the different helicity amplitudes as a function of, of Q squared for different resonances. So they have they have extracted this um, these helicity amplitudes for all four star resonances with invariant masses below 1.8 GB. So this is almost up to the place where the um, transition region starts. And Luis, yeah. question. You use the term background. Uh, mm, yeah. Slide before I ask. Is that what others refer to as continuum? Or <coughs> what, what do you mean by background? No, background usually here by, by background is, is what is understood is the non resonant part of the of the uh, of the amplitude. So the continuum. Uh, I'm so not so sure I'm I uh, understand the terminology. <coughs> born terms, for example. Not, well, born terms, properly unitarized. Unitarity usually is uh, relevant in this game. So here, just let me, let me uh, mention that here you s the points that you see in the, in the, in the plots, they are, they, are, they are not data. They are the, they are the result of the, of the um, of the analysis of their, their fits at the fixed Q square. So MADE performs two kinds of, of a fits at fixed Q square, and those are the points that you see. And then they, they have global analysis, which are the, the, the curves that you see here. So the difference, just, just for the sake of curiosity, the difference between the, the two curves that you see in each plot are a earlier and later analysis. So the moment you get, they get more data, they do new analysis and, and correct for um, up the, up the update the, um, so the helicity the amplitude. Here, the no, no, they are all helicity amplitudes so for, a, for a given transition. So this is, this is for a specific resonance. Yeah. And they are extracted at the peak. Yeah. Oh. So, so this, this is at W equal 1535 or 1520 of 1232 or the, um, so I, I can go back here, how, how does? Probably this goes. In in Maid's model, the um, the W dependence is in the denominator here, 
and here. I didn't, I didn't write it explicitly. And what's the background if it's adjusted? The back, the back, the, so the background is, is, so they have some, some, some models, some, some, some born terms, more or less standard, and including, they also include some vector exchange terms. And ultimately, I, I, uh, what, what they do is they, they check or they test, or maybe to up to some extent adjust the background in some of the partial waves where they expect not, not to have any, any, uh, any resonance. And the, the, the I, background is different Isospin, spin, the hack and free hack, or mm, Yeah, I think, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I think they have. Okay, so um, so last thing I want to say about this helicity amplitude is that these curves are conveniently parameterized in a very simple form. Okay, so just there are simple, simple analytic expressions for those curves here. How is this extrapolated to larger Q square or whether it's not <coughs> like these shapes? Um, probably get get guessing uh, so taking them to zero with some exponential. I don't think there is any anything fundamental in that. I, I right. So no. Well, at least for the elastic form factors, one has this uh, this I Q squared constraint from Q C D that they should go like one over Q to the fourth. So that's built into the parameterization. So mm. maybe something like that is being done here as well. So where are the form factors here? Of the Q those are helicity amplitudes. Yeah. If you are happy with that, uh, you're not ha so no, it is, no, this no, is not no, enough for you. What, uh, the form factors go down very, very fast to zero, right? So, so all, all, I, all I can say, well, I will, I'll show that this explicitly later, but the, these functions are directly related to form factors. OK, so now we come to neutrinos. And here, of course, we know that resonances are very important. They contribute to the inclusive cross-section and to the n a number of exclusive channels that uh, are going to be either backgrounds or are interesting channels for, for their own sake, like eta production or combined extensions production. We expect that at around 1 GeV, the delta is, is most of it. But as the energy increases, the, uh, the other, the other ends are going to, to, to give an important contribution. And um, so this is an example of where it would be very desired. So th th this is a puzzle that, that we have, which is the fact that, that we don't understand. So at least uh, recent calculations cannot explain pion, pion momentum or Pion, pion production data at minimum. This is just one example. The same thing happens in other channels. And here there are several issues because those, those measurements, of course, are, are nuclear targets. So uh, the reason for the discrepancy could be in the treatment of the final state interaction, in the medium modifications. But there is also a component of uncertainty in the, in the, in the, produ in the pion production model on the nucleon. So it adds to the, to the, to the, to the puzzle. And How on about the two body you want to if you want to put include this in this in this in this item here you are you you can and then there's the four experimental analysis huh? i'm sorry <laughs> uh i have a question I mean, you you start with you start with free nucleon neutrinos and then you put them in, in a medium right uh, is there any suppression of the amplitude at all or it, it, okay. it just spreads out well, there, there, there are several effects. Actually, I, that, that's going to be uh, discussed extensively on Sunday. I don't, I'm, I don't want to enter into this now in much detail. But of course, you have, you have, you have pion absorption. You have the, the delta broadens, and, and, and you, because you have uh, pionless delta decay. And you also have pion free scattering, where they 
being, right. uh, being shuttered to lower mm -hmm. energies. And sure. All of those stuff happens. You can have some all kind of side, depending on the channel, you can have side feeding via charge exchange. Many, many things. OK, so the point is that in order to understand data on nuclei, it would be nice to have uh, the, 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 the situation with the nuclear better under control. Unfortunately, the, the existing data are not particularly helpful. I actually kind of disagree with that. You, are, you disagree? Like, so both of those data sets do tell you something about the high momentum spectrum coming off of the material, which is a very interesting input for the plot that you just showed previously. If you go back one slide. So you see that you, so you, what you're saying is with the data as they as they are you can you can put strong constraints on this Well the uh, yeah. experiments more or less agree on the time of that spectrum which sort of suggests that it's a flux issue uh, which you know as a neutrino experimentalist would not shock me I mean <laughs> I, I all 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 I all I can say is that if you try to extract uh, the um the dominant, because this is something I, I have done myself. You try to extract the dominant axial form factor from this data. You have, you have, you you, you really see that that there is an incompatibility between between BNL and ANL but data. Really and, and, and I, I, I understand that, right? but it, but it's also true that if you, you know, try to, to use that data to predict the pion spectrum on carbon, <coughs> it's a useful input, and the two experiments are kind of consistent. Now the absolute level of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So you, what you are, your your well, point is maybe the sh the, 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 yeah, the it helps shape, with the shape. The shape of that spectrum, which is really where the disagreement is, right? If you go back to the slide, it's not so much that you know, the level is wrong; it's the shape. M maybe actually, I haven't looked at that, but I think you, you did. You check. You 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 played if with you with the. Uh, go back one this is this is this is this this. We played around, of course, by assuming that the mini moon has this ten percent. And the accuracy and the flux, if you change that in the same way as Nieves did it for his QE analysis, then overall the thing is right, but still there is the shape is not quite right, but it looks much better. Then, of course, you sort of <coughs> go in, even at this dip region, you come into the lower error bars, the lower ends of the error bars, you know, and so. Yeah, because the zero bars are all correlated. Uh, uh, so, so you're. I think, if I remember this original paper, yeah. I think BNL also, the flux prediction is. Somehow based on the measurement. Anyway, I mean, my, I, so my point is that yeah. there is actually useful information yeah. in that data set. Maybe but, but trying to get the overall level. Is so, over, have you compared specifically to the deuterium data and the pion spectrum? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a separate paper out of where we have this comparison with all sorts. Like in the old days, they have given various uh, spectra, not only for the invariant mass distributions for pi n, but also pi mu <coughs> and whatever. And there is a comparison around that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shape of the kinetic energy spectra here is a, is a problem. I think it should be there. And <coughs> I would like to add to his three points for a fourth explanation, namely the experimental analysis. <laughs> OK. Well, I should be clear, that's not bad data. There are at least three data sets which show the qualitatively the same feature in different experiments. So Yeah, but uh, because the shape of the kind of comes from <laughs> fine absorption. The shape comes from fine absorption. It has clearly yeah. been seen in photo production data on nuclei. And uh, why should that be different? The final states is the same if you make this thing with a photon or with a neutrino. Okay, anyway, back to the to the um, nuclear world. Uh, so a question one may ask is whether we really need a more sophisticated model for, for, for resonance production and for the uh, inelastic channels in the resonance region of the kind of those that are, uh, have been used to f in, in partial wave analysis. Well, I don't know if we, we need it or not. We already have one, mm -hmm. which is the Satoli model that has been e e extended, that has been applied to, to neutrinos. And it is great that it is there. Uh, and, and, and it's pioneering. And in a way, I would say it's ahead of time, because the, the, the data that are available, they, they, they do not. They're, they're not good enough to, to really get <coughs> everything that could be obtained out of this kind of model. So uh, to do a partial wave analysis, you need, partial, you, you need differential distributions. We, we, we don't have that to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, if that, this would be the way to go for, let's say, the, the, the Monte Carlo models, I, 
I could foresee an endless numbers of difficulties to implement such a such a model in the in the um, in the simulation. Maybe maybe I'm I'm, I'm wrong, but uh, perhaps it could be complicated. Now, most of the models in the in the in the market in the in the um, in the Monte Carlo generator business, are they are they are simpler, simpler. So basically, the the idea is to have single resonance excitation, complemented with some phenomenological or or empirical or even in some sometimes um, microscopic background. So the good thing about this is this is rather simple and it's easy to apply to nuclear targets because then you can, for example, throw dice to decide which, reson which, which resonance has been excited let it propagate in the nucleus and then decay or, or uh, undergo um, pionless decay or whatever. So, um, so this is an advantage. On the other hand, by doing this kind of treatment, the angular distribution, so you, you, you lose all the correlation that you had in the, in the, in the, um, at the level of the nucleon, in the, in, the, in the production process on the nucleon. The hope is that you're going to lose that anyway when you are in the, in, in the nucleus. And this is perhaps true only up to some extent and in some kinematic regions. Now, is this good enough? I don't want to lower my expectations too much, but I would say that, that yes, this is probably good enough uh, as of today. And, but provided that the experimental information that we have from a number of, of reactions is really taken into account. And so this has been, this has been studied in, 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 the, in different papers on how, how to use the, the information that, 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 that we have. I have talked about this many times. I don't want to dwell on this too much. But very briefly, let, let me illustrate this on, on the uh, example of single resonance excitation in a charge current um, process. So in, <coughs> in this case, the, the, the differential cross-section is proportional to, the, to a bright beginner, describing the, the, the resonance, and amplitude square. This, this amplitude square comes from the convolution of the leptonic current and the, and the hadronic current here. This is the, the charge current case. It can be easily changed for um, neutral current or, or electromagnetic um, processes. And here we have the current that has the vector part and the axial part, and going to, for the time being, ignore the, the axial part, stick to the vector component that should be uh, conserved. This is gauge invariance or, conserv or the conservation of the vector current. And then what one, one can do is to write the most general uh, current, which depending of, of, of the um, quantum numbers of your resonances, here are three examples with different quantum numbers. You can have two vector form factors, or three if the resonance is spin three half, and different um, Dirac structure depending on, on the on the, on the parity. So um, now the the, import, the important point here is that uh, thanks to to, to the um, to gauge invariance or the conservation of the vector current and, and isospin symmetry, it is possible to relate the, the, the matrix element for the for the nucleon to resonance transition in the weak sector and in the electromagnetic sector. So this, this is the, the, those are, they are basically isospin rotations that allow you to do that. And as a result, the weak vector form factors can be expressed in terms of the electromagnetic ones. <coughs> and for the electromagnetic ones, what, what we can do is that if we know the helicity amplitudes, because someone like MADE or any other take, take whatever favorite uh, partial wave analysis you, you, you like. And if, 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 if the, those amplitudes are, are, are obtained, so those, those helicity amplitudes, the, um, the, the, the electromagnetic form factor can be extracted by plugging, in, by plugging here the, the electromagnetic current in terms of the form factors and uh, so, uh, finding the, um, <coughs> calculating the matrix element and inverting the, the, um, the three equations. So this is more or less straightforward. This has been done. This is what is implemented, for instance, in the, in the, in the Gissen BUU model for the resonance excitation. Now, um, what is the situation in the, in the Monte Carlo generator? So they are all using Rhein and Segal. Rhein and Segal means, on one hand, that lepton mass is neglected, and apart, but there have been some, some works 
where it has been shown how, how to um, generalize that. Then uh, it implements, so the, the input for the microscopic input comes from, from a quark model, and it's outdated. So uh, this is uh, the situation. And uh, as, we, uh, 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 as you all know, this translates into a um, <coughs> wrong description of uh, electron scattering uh, data. Now, uh, how to improve this? Well, once one possibility is to just do what, what, what I showed before, change drastically the philosophy, get form factors in terms of, of helicity amplitudes, then contract them with the, with the currents the, 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 um, and, and, and get amplitudes and, and go this way. Actually, I, I remember years ago, Tina Leiden spent some time at, at RAL, and the idea was to, to do that with Gini. It, 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 did, it, didn't, it didn't work. Uh, it's not obvious that it wouldn't work, but it's complicated. So I, um, what I'm going to suggest here is a way to go around this. And the idea is the following. If you, we look at the, at the um, Ryan and Segal cross-section, it, it is proportional <coughs> to um, so six amplitudes in pairs. And those, these, these F amplitudes have this structure. So as you can see, what we have here are contractions of the electromagnetic current and the polarization vectors. And what we have here are resonant and nucleon states in the helicity basis. So they're just helicity amplitudes, nothing more than that, because Ryan and Segal model is built on the helicity basis. And if we now look again at the helicity amplitudes that are extracted in partial wave analysis, you can see that up to uh, complex conjugation and kinematic factors, they're just the same. So one can relate these Fs with <coughs> A's one half, A three half, and A's one and the and the S one half of the of the uh, of the partial wave analysis in the in, in the in the electron scattering uh, studies. So up to, up to some kinematic factors and some signs that depend on the resonance. So we, 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 we can directly relate these amplitudes to those ones. And what, what this means is that it is possible to implement the helicity amplitudes from, from electron scattering experiments without touching really the, the, the basic structure of the codes, which is probably what anybody wants to do. Um, so we have tried to pursue this, 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 this path with Steve in the, in the last few months. And we already have some preliminary um, results. So the idea is simply to replace there where we, Ryan and Segal had some, some tables for these Fs. We have, we have replaced with some combinations of, of, this, the, the, of the main helicity amplitudes. I'm not going to show any result now. You have to wait until, until Sunday. Sorry about that. <laughs> Steve are, is going to show them. And I can already tell that the agreement in the, in the, in the, um, electrons, uh, in the comparison to electron scattering data is, is improved. Still, it's not perfect. It's by no means perfect. And when you look at the results, think that uh, there, can, there, there are still issues. First, we. We're not yet ready to rule out completely stupid mistakes. And then there is also something that is a little trickier to handle, which is the ambigui ambiguity of the, of the um, dependence of the resonances when W is not equal to the resonant mass. Because for simplicity, what, what we have done so far is to relate the Fs with the As and S at the resonant peak. And keeping only the, the, the uh, W, the, the invariant mass dependence that is there in the brag bin. This is the only thing that has been done. However, if you look better at the, at the um, Ryan and Segal Fs, they have some W dependence. And, and also, there, are, there is also some W dependence in the, in the um, production and decay vertices in the main model. So that this needs to be, to be looked out more carefully. So finally, another, another, another um, ingredient that, that, that 
could explain discrepancies is the fact that resonances are not the only thing that can be there. They are, there, there is some resonant background, and there is eventually interferences between this background and the resonances. So even if at some point you see, you see that the data are overestimated, it could still be that there is some background, that there is some destructive interference, and this, go, this goes down to the, to the data. In Gini, before, there was no interference between resonances. <coughs> so, this, so this must be improved. Well, again, I, um, I think that improving that would be tricky. Yeah. Rhinon Segal model in principle has that, but then you have to do, you, you can implement only that channel by channel. So you, 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 you have to, you, 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 can, you, can, you can have, in, of course, you, the resonances by themselves don't interfere. What you have interference if the, if the final state is the same. If you're looking, looking at pion nucleon, then you, you can introduce some interference. If you want to let those resonances decay to whatever they can, like they, if, they, if, if, it, if it is an S11-1535, you want to let it decay into pi and nucleon or, or eta nucleon or anything, it's going to be more complicated. So I don't know. This, this is a decision that eventually should be, should be made. My, my, impression, my impression that is particularly on the nucleus, this interference is not so important. But I'm you, mean, you mean the background resonance interference? Or what? No, 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 no. This, this has to be effectively yeah. incorporated. I mean the, the, the interference between resonances. Oh, between, resonances. between resonances. Yeah, the, because you are diff in different partial waves. Some, in some so cases, yes. In others, no. You have, you, you have resonances in the same partial wave in some cases. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This could, could happen. Like so you have so to. Often that they are close together. That's yeah, that, that is also true. But I guess this sort of resonance interference, that's. That's crucial because in some of the this, this, this has to be taken. Example, this has to be taken care. So already, uh, in Gini, there is some kind of, of, of background. I'm not yeah. going to talk about it. I don't know it well enough. My idea of how, how one could deal with that is basically the way, the way we deal with, with that in the, in the, in the GIS and BUU models. So again, again, in the vector sector. I'm, Focused on the vector set of where, where this, it is there where we have we have extensive data. So they are also in the same way that they, they made people parameterize the transition uh, helicity amplitudes. They have parameterized the full amplitudes, pion photoproduction amplitudes, and again using using isospin rotations, those amplitudes can be related to the weak ones. Again, this is only the vector part. So the idea would be that after subtracting the resonant contribution, whatever is left is, 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 is treated as, as some effective background that would account for the, for the real background and also the interference. So it could actually happen that this background is negative because there is some destructive interference. So of course, this so, so, <coughs> such a suggestion would, wor would be specific for the pion channel. Again, only for the, for, the, for the vector part of the amplitude and only for the pion channel. What about other inelastic channels? Um, I, I would say a priori I would ignore backgrounds in other channels. I don't really know how good that is. Yeah, but also the axial part of the background is this, 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 I, this I, I will come to the axial part now. I don't know how much time I still and have. Also, and also, as you mentioned, I mean, if things can become negative, sure. then you have to find new strategies to <coughs> Well, they are not negative particles. Yeah, they no, are. They no, are. No, this, this, this is oppression, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that means that you have to suppress that that contribution in that yeah, yeah, in that that's amount. That's not so easy. I mean, you have to think about good algorithms to do that. Okay. Sure. Uh, sorry, where are you? Huh? In the summation, yeah, AI times M. This, this, this here, those are, um, so basically this is, this is M's are the, the, uh, all, all the um, direct structures that you can have based on, on the symmetries. And A's are, the, are, the, are the, the amplitudes that you fit to data. So I just didn't write, the, the, the M's are direct structures, all, all, all possible ones in the, in the 
for this reaction. So now I go to the, to the axial sector, where, of course, we, we know a lot less. All, all, all we know about the axial current that is partially conserved, so if we are happy with the pion being massless, this, this axial current is conserved. And the um, other assumption that is reasonable to make is that the pseudo-scalar form factors, called it FP or C6A, depending on the, um, which state are you looking at, uh, the, the, the pseudo-scalar form factors are dominated by the pion pole. This is also a reasonable assumption. You also, you also see that, in, in, for instance, in, la in lattice results. And using these two assumptions, PCAC and, and, and pion pole dominance, it is possible to derive goldberger trainman relations which are going to um, relate the dominant axial couplings at q square equals 0 with basically the um, resonant branching ratio into pionuclein. And this can be done for any state. And this will give the, the dominant part of the axial current, which is the contribution that comes from q square equals 0. Now, what happens at, at finite q square that is something that we, that we have to learn from other sources. There is no way out. For some resonances that, don't, that are not very important, depending on the, on the energy, this one, one could guess. One could guess that a dipole with an, an axial mass of 1 GeV is good enough. For the delta, this is probably not, not good enough. So we, the, on, the, on, the only way to, to, to learn more would be having better data. And then, of course, this, this here, these uh, goldberger trainman relations I have derived using, using form factors. Those form factors I introduced before. But again, it should be possible. I haven't done that, but it should be possible to derive goldberger trainman relations for the Fs that appear in the Rhein and Segal model. And in this way, one would have the best that one can have from phenomenology nowadays, which is the couplings at Q the axial couplings, the dominant axial couplings at Q squared equals 0. And uh, again, with the axial part of the background, what could take a similar strategy, which is using, the, using PCAC to relate the axial current to pi and nucleon amplitudes, and then again, subtract resonances and whatever is left, use that as a background. This, again, is all at q squared equals 0. At finite q squared, we, we, we are in terra incognita. Um, so I'm basically done with that. I just want to spend a few minutes but on week. But still this problem that I raised before, the, the axial background. The well, the axial background, the, the, I mean, the only thing I, I, that comes to my mind that could be done, well, the, 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 there is what, what we did that I, I, frankly speaking, never liked the idea of taking something that was whatever fits the data, which are what they are. What what occurs to me is that we, we, could, we could use PCAC. This, this is what Satoshi has, has done to um, extract the, the, um, the, the structure functions at q squared equals 0. So use, use PCAC to relate pionucleon amplitudes to, to uh, pionucleon amplitudes, which are, which are parametrized. The, let's say they are known. Relate them to the axial current at q squared equals 0. From, from that, you can subtract the background, and you get some, some, some effective background at q squared equals 0. This is the only place where we have no, guidance from, from data. Yeah, exactly. That's that's, that's, that's the only thing. Know what to do for now at q squared, yeah. Okay. Guess. Guess or measure. There is nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Y here, you uh, want yeah, to? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, no, no. I said two things. First, I, I said you can derive goldberg trainman relations okay. that relate dominant mm -hmm. axial form factors, uh, uh, couplings at q square equals 0, with resonance uh, branching ratios to nucleon pion. And those branching ratios you take from your favorite uh, model. PDG or or uh, SAID or uh, EBAC or whatever. I'm 
actually the face the face is going to be effectively included in, 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 in whatever background you are able to, to put. So what, what only, you only, only, the, the other choice would be to try to implement the Watson theorem in some, in some and, 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 and this is tricky. And this is tricky. So one of the, uh, one of the problems that has plagued us and still plaguing us for the others, the foreign at the wrong another <coughs> important number of foreign or so in the local resonance region, the two parts are not open, so it becomes a major inelasticity, the major part to the total cross section actually. And we never, I mean, now you can of course do again the resonance into two pi, and that's possible. We have experimental information on that, but now you need a two pi background, you know, that, uh, and there we are sort of lost. Yeah. There is some indication one needs that actually to explain the total cross section. The only, uh, uh, the, uh, I only know one modern paper and, and uh, maybe a couple of old yeah. papers from the 60s dealing with, the, I mean, developing a model for two pi in production. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Hugh. So on this last point, I have a big recollection. Wasn't there data from BEPS in with hydrogen and deuterium? Uh, probably, I, I, I'm not sure, per, perhaps so, but so, so what? I'm saying that's, that's looking at the same region as the higher Q squared. Uh, you mean that here you could uh, add one something else, not just A and L? Well, this is my prejudice because it's low, low, it is the region where the, in the delta region, this is basically A and L and B and L, but of course. I'm saying for those other mm -hmm. resonances, I think there were other experiments <laughs> Sure, they, they are, they are going to be small sitting on the, on the delta tail. Uh. But there are, there are other experiments. Hmm? The BEPS. No, I mean the BEPS. The BEPS. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the BEPS was published at the W also. I don't know how good an analysis that was. <laughs> <laughs> so there is low W data from BEPS, which is high energy. Yeah, and, and that's. If, the, if they are cuts in principle, that should be, that should be okay. That provided that you believe the car, the 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 the, 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 the flux is enough. Yeah. Yeah. The data shows that there's a significant non resonance contribution in some of the in so in some channels. Yeah, that I believe and that. And which is not, which we oh, A and L and B and L data also show that. And they show, and they also predict show the Lasik out prediction, which doesn't agree with that by factor of three. So in the places where there's a big non resonance background. Those channels for the delta, I think it's neutron phi zero or something. Some of them, I, uh, the, 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 the Rasik R model is shown. And I can believe that, but probably that has been tuned by by some of the people working with the uh, in Gini. Probably they have made they have made, they have made sure, sure that that those those uh, I don't know if it's to that data. those data are, are well described. I think, but of course this is not a question to me. Now uh, the resonances in electron scattering don't necessarily decay to a single prime, but using that form factor, they can decay to anything, right? Sure. But sure. here, the they common decay is to a single prime. No, 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 wait. Uh, yeah. This background I'm suggesting here would only, would only take care of, uh, would only fix mm. the pion channel. For the other channels, I have, no, I, 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 I have nothing to say. Only fix the one pion channel. The, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, pion yeah. nuclear, the pion nuclear yeah. channel. For the other channels, I have nothing to say. Uh, my first reaction would be so I, negl I neglect that and see what and, and, and see how I, how how I can live with that. Uh, the vector for which background from uh, the electron scattering, right? No, that's also that that's also for for the for the pion nuclear channel. At least the, the one I the one I know I know I know how it is parameterized and is extracted for, from data and it's well under control is the pion nuclear one. Already, if you go to the eta nucleon channel, which I have looked up a little bit, it's you have far less data. And uh, uh, you mean you're looking? I thought that you're looking at like inclusive electron scattering. So you're just looking at final state. No, no, no. What, 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 th there is there are two two issues here. There is resonance production. Right. If you look at if, if 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 you if you adopt the philosophy that you have isolated resonance production that doesn't interfere, and then some some. Effective background that take takes care for for rest for the interference and and, and, and the the non resonant part of the amplitude, so the resonance sky can decay to anything. Right. Now the background is is it, it depends specifically on the final state that you that that you have. So you, 
at least in this way, I, I, I don't know how to implement Us, using this data. I don't know how to implement a background that is not specific for pionucleon or for eta nucleon or for k lambda or for whatever I have. I would have to develop backgrounds that are different for each uh, final state. Of course, the first one, first priority would be to do pionucleon because this is the largest channel, the most important one. Uh, the, the, uh, for that kind of scanning, you do fit the whole process, don't you? For no, 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 no. Well, no. The, at, at least not. At least no, 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 no. Those parameterization I was I was selling you, those are pion nucleon, and actually I need to know the final state in order to to, to make the, the the rotations. Otherwise, I, I I wouldn't know how to. Actually, I wouldn't know even how to how to parameterize this. Because because the structure of these amplitudes here depends on the on the quantum numbers of the final state. So, so you're fitting the electron scattering data. And supposedly you were describing it completely, right? No. The inclusive. The inclusive. So yeah, the inclusive. So, but then, then what do? How do you? How 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 do I relate that to the to the? Um, well, you have to make sure that the, you you conserve okay. the, the cross section. Sure. The sum of all these amplitudes, he wants to sum that all up, all these various channels, and then be sure that you get the total out. That was part of the thing that I was uh, referring to. You are right. I mean, there are these complications of background terms for ETAs and so on, but they are small. But what one really needs is the two pi background. And that's a real problem. I mean, from electromagnetic reactions, one still has that because one has some of these resonances. There are models like uh, yeah, these calculations sure. that you refer to, uh, but uh, they, are, they don't go high enough in energy on one hand. And of course, for the extra part, it's, uh, it's hopeless, so to say. It doesn't have anything. For the electrons, one sees that quite clearly. One needs that to exhaust the total cross section. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, all the other channels, they all, in principle, also have background amplitudes, but they don't contribute much. But the 2 pi, pi and 2 pi are the essential things. And, uh, yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Sure, point taken. I would, I would be happy if we can have the pi and background on the control and then think about well, maybe one the rest. Well, maybe take his parameterization sort of to provide. <laughs> yeah, but then, ha yeah, yeah, sh oh, you the, the, the yeah, you shouldn't go through the resonance step, but underneath no, somehow, that's you that's know. That's not the concept of duality. That's right. The concept of duality is to go through the resonance Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Okay. OK, so as I said, I wanted to finish with a few words about the eta channel. Mm -hmm. So the eta channel is not particularly large. I don't think it's going to be a major headache for any oscillation analysis. Still, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's also, f it's for example, one of the possible backgrounds for, for proton decay searches. It could be a source of information about second class currents. And it's very sensitive to the axial properties of the, of the N star 1535, which is, a, which is an interesting state. So it's very close to the pion, it's to the, sorry, to the nucleon eta threshold. So and, and actually, the, the properties of this resonance are hard to extract in, in partial wave analysis. Furthermore, there are, there are many models, there are the dynamical models where this resonance appears from the intrinsic dynamics. So you don't need to put the bright beginner explicitly there by hand, but just by, by having the, the, um, the, 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 the meson baryon dynamics in coupled channel, the pole of this, of this uh, state is dynamically generated. And on top of that, even if, if this state is below the, um, the lambda, so the, the lambda uh, keon or um, sigma keon th threshold, it contributes to those channels. You will never get the branching ratio from, from so there is not such a, uh, such a thing as branching ratio from n star 1535 to uh, lambda keon, but that doesn't mean that this state doesn't contribute to the, <coughs> to the cross section. And this has been studied in, in, in photoproduction and in, and, and in pion nucleon uh, interactions leading to, so going to, to lambda keon or, 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 or sigma keon channels. And so we have, we have tried to make some predictions for, for um, neutrino cross sections. Here, one of the complications is that if you are, if you are naive and take the helix, so we, we, we basically have the same philosophy as before. To, to to um, deal with the 1535, we take helicity amplitudes from made. However, if we take the helicity amplitudes um, from the pion nucleon anal analysis in made, 
you f what, what you find is that you don't describe eta photoproduction correctly. This means that the, uh, already at the level of photoproduction, there is some tension, if not incompatibility, between the, the uh, helicity amplitudes that are extracted from pion interactions and from eta interactions. So there is actually a separated eta-made analysis. And the numbers that, that the numbers that come from there are not fully compatible with those in the in the uh, in the pion in the pion sector. So you can see that in spite of the wealth of data that one has in this kind of electromagnetic reactions, they are they are open questions. And this is one of them: how to reconcile uh, eta the, the um, eta photoproduction with pion photoproduction. At least in May, this is this is an issue. Okay, so we have anyway calculated. Um, so they actually evaluate these, these <coughs> two channel diagrams in a diagrammatic yeah. language. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So we have we have nucleum nucleum poles. There is there is nothing else in the from the um, non resonant contribution at, at at least at with the leading Lagrangians, and then we have in star fifteen thirty five and in star sixteen fifty, and we predict some cross sections which are largely dominated by uh, in star fifteen thirty five. The cross sections look small. But still, perhaps they can be. They, they are large enough to be to be studied at, at Minerva. Okay. So with this, I wanted to conclude. So uh, Jorge asked us. My, uh, my colleague Steve. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, you kind of peaked in the early part of the talk. Uh, you mentioned that the Lagrangian well, eta is difficult to to detect, right? Eta goes to two gammas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, actually, that's a super easy signature. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's, oh no, it's not, you know. Also, I mean, it's eta, obvious, eta yeah. also, also, of course, have a strong final state interaction. Because, oh. I mean, mm -hmm. that might be why they have to. So, that, so, one then, so in the same way it is produced from 1535, it's going to interact it through this resonance. Yeah. Roughly 50% decay into pi, 50 into eta. If it goes to pi, the eta is gone. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but that has been looked at again. There are, again, data on photo production of ETAs on nuclei, up to 1.2 GV photon energy or something like that. Once you see them, you, you should be able to see them on the well, I, Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I don't know, maybe. No, but CFT, you can have this. If you have this eight, then you have hydrogen. I'll just make the comment that first I'd like to see in any other analysis add up everything compared to electron scattering data. Are you describing it or not? I mean, that's, that's the first thing. Well, you will, you'll, you'll, you'll see something uh, on, on Sunday from then Steve. Then, then if, you see, if you describe it, then, then you, can use, you can use duality and just, and just use the cohomology relationship and predict all the neutrino cross section on average. But you don't even have to use on average. Take all the bumps and wiggles there and just put the duality, uh, the uh, isospin quark I equal to a half relationship on average. Take the quark But am, am I supposed to believe duality also f at such low invariant masses uh, at, the, at the delta? No, no, I'm talking about the higher resonance, 50 and okay, 80. I mean, in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the, not, 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 the delta. not the delta. No, no, the, the, the other resonances. First of all, you gotta put, uh, if you're going to match onto the one up, you have to get that region to work. Otherwise, you can't match. You're trying to sort of fall off the edge. You, you, you got to stay up here. <laughs> so you need to predict that. And I think you want to rotate the predicted neutrino anti neutrino line. And then you do all this stuff and you can compare to what you sort of expect. You have a rough idea of what's going to happen. You know? And if you're off by some big factor, then you know that there's something wrong. I mean, duality cannot be that bad in a comparison between the 518 tree. I mean, because <coughs> there must be a lot of partial wave and a lot of things in there already by the time you get to the higher resonance. That's it. I mean, there is al always the question of the axial part, which is. Yeah, but you can. You can assume a vector. I mean, you can, assume I mean, you can do the exercise only in, in, the, in the electromagnetic sector. No, no, no. no. You, you can assume vectors in the axial. 
and see what happens, because that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do in Well, the, it's you know. modifications for pi x and pi t squared. Yeah. OK, so Jorge wanted questions. So instead of a summary, I, 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 I've got some questions. <laughs> so first is actually it's a question I was already um, asking during the, during the talk, is that whether we need or not a drastically better resonance uh, model. Better than what? Fried cigar? Yes. Well, wait a <laughs> second. No, no, no. It, it dep depends what you, what you call Ryan and Segal. I think that the structure of the, uh, well, my, my point here was that we can keep the structure of the model. I think, I, I, I think this is good enough, provided that we, th we replace the, the junk. <laughs> But the, but why not? <laughs> well, because you lose any. I mean, Rank Siegel is universal, <laughs> and they are just uh, two fold factors, and they describe all the resonances in the, in the region. So, but you okay. introduce a lot of a lot of I mean, this is not Rank Siegel. Whatever, I uh, yeah, whatever. Let's call it the what, model. what whatever, whatever name you want to give to it, no problem. Uh, second question I have is, which is the best way to take into account the phenomenology that 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 we that we know that it that is there into account for neutrino reactions? I I, I suggested some, so I, I have some ideas, and some others are are around. So this is probably something that to be discussed. All the question is again we have been discussing how how to uh, deal with the background. Another question which is related to the previous talk is how to go from the resonance region to the deep inelastic region, which I we were taught not to call it deep, deep inelastic but continuum region. This is the, what the name you you like for it. Okay. <laughs> And then there, I have also a few questions that are more of an experimental nature. For example, are we ever going to see new uh, neutrino nuclear measurements in our lifetime? Um, no, the nucleus. Nucleon, nucleon, nucleon. Hydrogen? Uh, hi hydrogen and deuterium. No, you can say that. No, hydrogen is too dangerous. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the next question is, are, uh, can we learn something at the nuclear level? Of course, Minerva has nuclear targets, and, and there is the A dependence and all this. But are we going to be able to um, learn something about neutrino interactions at the nuclear ne level from Minerva? Or, the or, or what is going to happen is that the uncertainties and, I don't know, fluxes, final state interactions, nuclear effects, and so on are going to, to uh, dominate? On your previous question, are there going to be new, new, new neutrino nucleon measurements? Um, it would be great to quantify how important that is, uh, oh. you know, because yeah. that's. I mean, I, I mean, we, you know, the yes, hydrogen is uh, uh, a challenging uh, <laughs> material to work with, but it's not an impossible material to work with. And, and it's uh, all important. If you look for the pion <coughs> that he was talking about, there is this discrepancy of thirty percent between. Pion is directly linked to the stuck pion events and to the, all these QE debates we had had before. All this QE debate is nice, but uh, you have to worry about the pions because experimentally you can't distinguish these events. One wants to have the pions under control. So I mean, e even even the hydrogen target. Yeah. So yeah. I think the, the you know, it's one of the things we'd like to get out of this workshop. Yeah, yeah. Some measure we'd like to list some measurements and have very strong arguments, especially for the. For, for measurements that would require the use of materials that are challenging. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we have some very good arguments and that uh, we'll figure out, we'll have, I mean, it's up to us to figure out how to deal with it. So, yeah. even, 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 in Q, even in QE. If you want neutrino neutrons, neutrino hydrogen, and you want to be able to observe the resonance structure, you need an active target. Yeah. You can't just have a container of, uh, of deuterium and see what comes out of it. Some kind of uh, or, you need, or, you need a, or you need a low profile target. Yeah. Or, or a low profile target. Yeah. If, if you could have an inactive target that would be low profile. Yeah. 
So I mean, that's not ideal. I, yeah, you, you, prefer an, you prefer an active target, but, but a low profile target might get you pretty far and would probably be something that's uh, it's easier to, to deal with from the uh, from a logistical standpoint. Hmm. Uh, well, one thing that I can't measure eventually is the average cost cutting in residency of a nuclear target. You know, I mean, they have the, just the average. You know, so between W is this and W is that. Okay, right. not individual residency. So that's why I'm interested in finding out the projections for the total cost mm -hmm. in that region. And that's why I say, you know, if you can take the, and, and, and see how it comes in. Because that, that's one thing that you mentioned. But it's a sign of the learning. Well, that, that, that we, have, we have published. The in, we have the inclusive cross-section published in the nuclear targets. The, uh, inclusive? Yeah. It's... Uh, no, for the... Yeah, you can take our yeah. first and do so the the, 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 uh, the results there are for carbon and iron, if I remember well, right? Yeah. When you published the total cross section Yeah, we have total cross sections. And, dif and, and double differential cross sections in the paper. I don't remember the details anymore. So, I, I, so that's one thing to compare to. You publish them by doing what? Uh, different analysis? So. So we have done the rest, the rest, the resonance uh, treatment that I just explained yeah. before. No, not in terms of the helicity amplitudes right. directly, but using the form factors. So that's the resonance excitation, and then the, the, there are a number of of, of, of nuclear effects, mm -hmm. Fermi motion, Pauli, Pauli blocking, mean field that then changes. So you do have effective masses, um, resonance tra spectral function uh, modified in the medium for the for the delta at least, and. Uh, the, 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 the vector background was parameterized in the same way I, 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 I propose here, and then there was some, some axial background that was and roughly constrained with the ANL data. You agree with all the electron scattering data, the total? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we missed yeah, miss some strength in the, in, the, in the deep, which probably now we would attribute to, to particle to hole contributions, and then there were, there were small discrepancies in the, in the um, the height of the quasi elastic, well, because we also had the quasi elastic, but okay, resonances. And of course, there was, there was the, the we, we started to see discrepancies above the 2 pion threshold. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, the, the, there was no, do, no, no 2 pion background there. So above 2 pion threshold, we had only resonant contributions, and the, the, the discrepancy started there. What W is that? That's. Uh, um, so it's going to be. Um, the two it's, 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 around 1400. Yeah. Is N, 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 9, 9, 938. So nuclear mass yeah, plus exactly twice the. Yeah. That's sure, the sure. This, 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 this is going to be. Hour. This is the threshold. Well, this, the, problem, the problems <laughs> started there. They, yeah. they, 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 they uh, <laughs> steadily increased. So I don't know. We can look at the figures if you want. Uh, OK, so I have still two questions to go. Uh, one of these, whether we can get useful, inf uh, by the way, I, I, I wanted to mention before, just going back to hydrogen, I, I wanted to say that even in the quasi-elastic uh, channel, so we, 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 it is possible to obtain the axial radius from pion um, electroproduction in a, in a fairly model-independent way using current perturbation theory. That's, that has been done. But this is just the radius. We don't know much about the Q square dependence of the of the, uh, <coughs> the quasi elastic. So I'm going back to the to the to the question about the nuclear measurements. No, no, that's not true. It has a, uh, in our paper we, we took the data. They do give it to you as a function of Q square. Sure, they sure. give you F A as a function of Q square up to Q square about. Sure, but but the, but course. but you are limited by the by the data that are there. I'm right. saying it's beyond the radius. Sure, 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 but the, the, the only way you can learn about it is, is from A and L and B and L and, and whatever else data I is there which have uh, the uh, uncertainties that they have. I think that would be, the, all I'm saying is that would be an extra, for at least from my point of view, an extra motivation to, to uh, remeasure on hydrogen. Yeah, I've made this point.
before we throw that data away, we can see where you are and how it's going to be <laughs> okay, I, I still have two oh, questions. Say it's safer. You sit on the computer and. Uh, say something. Yeah, I wanted to add um, I, something to help inform this whole picture is my prejudice from listening to your talk is that uh, one of the limiting uncertainties from the phenomenological or theoretical information is the difference between ANL and DNL. Is that really a true statement? Can you Could you itemize or go through just phenomenologically and say, okay, these are the data sets I have. This is sort of the, now the error on the the CC1 pi or the, the resonant cross-section and say, ah, yeah, it really is the ANL and DNL are or discrepancy that's limiting us, or are there any other gotchas out there that we need to think about theoretically or experimentally? And that isn't clear to me yet. If you if you if you look, for instance, the um, any of any of the talks we give on photons, just to mention recent talks and the one that will that I I I'll give on next Friday or 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 Thursday, whatever. There we have some error bands. Also, if you look at some of the um, I can go back to uh, I don't want this far away. The um, Juan's plots on, on pion production that I showed at the beginning. There is some error band. This error band comes mainly from the uncertainty in the determination of the leading axial coupling. This is that we, in the, this language, the form factors, we, the naming of the form factors that we use is C5A at zero. And this uncertainty comes, uncertainty comes mainly from the uh, ANL, BNL. Uncertainty. I can tell you, for example, incoherent pion production is going to be, it's a small channel, but it's going to be huge, the uh, uncertainty. Because the coherent channel is basically, in this language, C5A at 0 squared. If you can measure it well enough, perhaps. Yeah, and that's another story. Oh, well, I have first, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would first mention about 
parity violating electroscattering experiment because this is other source of axial properties that we should perhaps take more seriously into account. I'm, I'm not sure how far we can get there, but for instance, there is a recent paper published by some JLab, I think it's G0 collaboration, where they have a, they have a measure for the first time the asymmetry in the, in the delta region. The error is not small. And then from that asymmetry, they extract some combination of, of axial uh, nucleon to delta transition form factors. You don't get one of them uh, singled out. You get some combination. So the, the information is not, is not obvious. It's not straightforward to use it. Uh, they are larger bars, but uh, it, 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 is, it is there, and I think should be, should be uh, perhaps uh, considered. Now, uh, the, the, the last question I, I, I had is how to avoid, in, this, in these kind of meetings, the, the, what I uh, started to call the donkey effect. And that was uh, nicely depicted by, by Tepe. So um, in, the, in this cartoon, so we have, we have um, donkey experimentalist, and no, no offense made by, by that. And it's, it's a hungry donkey experimentalist, which is offered food in a various number of, of fancy, fa fancy, absolutely essential, uh, uh, fundamental, and not always uh, <laughs> free of contradiction and, and, in, and compatibility among themselves, uh, theoretical uh, models and, and, and descriptions so that uh, the donkey experimentalist gets totally confused. And uh, at, this, uh, at this point is where the bullied and ass would uh, starve to death. <laughs> but uh, our, our hero here is smarter than Dan, and he simply goes back to good old simple uh, wrong outdated uh, <laughs> models. This is, this, is, this is kind of sad, but this is going to keep happening <laughs> if we theorists are not able to at least agree on what a spectral function is. And, <laughs> and this is all I wanted to say. This experiment published several papers. I'm sure they all published the quasi uh, lattice. This is the theory. And at this point, from this, uh, at this point, you're probably thinking how to calculate the Nigerian quasi lattice cross section, I hope. <laughs> so if you can look at the ratio of the deuterium to delta to deuterium, if they publish a deuterium paper with a quasi lattice cross section of functional energy and they publish yeah. a delta, and you look at the ratios, up one more time. If you need a separate arrangement, please contact the both Should I forward this off? Yes, please do. Yeah, this Here. Yeah, this is there.